Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Helicopter maintenance health desk. Welcome to the channel. All right, I'm doing three videos in a set. The first video is removing the main rotor hub shaft or the mast. The second video is doing an inspection on the spacer tube and the transmission. And if you need to disassemble the mast, we're going to go through that. And the third video will be reinstalling the main rotor hub shaft or also known as the mast into the transmission. I figured instead of making one long video that's going to be over an hour that nobody's going to watch, I decided to break it into three videos. So this is the first of the videos, removing the mast from the transmission. Again, it's an Airbus EC-135 helicopter. I've been getting a lot of feedback, a lot of good feedback from a lot of you guys out there in the industry, and I it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. All right, before we begin, a quick disclaimer. I'm not affiliated with any aircraft manufacturers. I make these videos for entertainment, not education. Always refer to the manufacturer's maintenance instructions and not this video or any other videos on this channel. If there is something said in this video that is contrary to the maintenance manual, defer to the maintenance manual. Maintenance manuals are being revised all the time. Check current revisions prior to completing any maintenance on your aircraft. That being said, thank you for watching and let's roll. I'm going to say this tons of times in these videos, but read the manual. If you say, okay, I want to do the spacer tube inspection. Well, that's aircraft maintenance manual AMM 6321006-2. Well, you end up going through about 20 different sections or 20 different chapters in the manual and it's all over the place. So it's important that you go read it. In this, vi in this set of videos here, I'm going to just go over a few things briefly, but I'm, I'm going to try to point out some things that are not in the manual and some, some parts that uh, might save you some heartache in the end, okay? But I'm not going to read the manual word for word. You need to go there and figure out what kind of mastinox you need, what kind of grease you use, what kind of oil, all these other things, okay? I'll try to set you up with all the part numbers that are hard to find, but that'll be in the next video. All right. Removing the main rotor hub shaft. This is AMM 6231004-3. All right, we're not going to go line by line here, but make sure that you check every box on here, okay? Because it doesn't tell you to drain the oil out of the transmission, so that's an obvious thing you're going to need to do. So let's just go through what we have put together so far. Okay, I misspoke. So one of the first steps you do on removing the transmission, it tells you to remove the lower transmission cover. And the first step on that is to drain the lubricating oil from the transmission. Drain your oil, and it references a chapter. Next step, remove main transmission service cover from the transmission deck. That's a different chapter. Disconnect the wire. Then it says remove the Y strut, and that's another chapter in the manual. Do you see how many times we have to bounce around the manual? And there's parts that are important in each chapter. Next thing you need to do, go ahead and remove the hubcap and the hubcap support. You're, you're going to have to take off the blades sooner or later. Do it now. Do it after the hubcap. Whatever you want to do. Or if you've got a couple guys taking those off and somebody's working at the bottom, that works too. So take off the hubcap support. Make sure your blades are marked properly for reinstallation. Take note of how the grounding cable is routed. Because that's the way it's supposed to be in this picture right here. Disconnect the two wires that connect to the top of the hubcap support. And there's a zip tie. Holds the wire that goes to the bottom of the mast. It's zip tied to the side of the mast. So cut that zip tie. I wouldn't drop that wire down there yet. That's going to be like a team effort. When you, when you lower the, the part in the bottom of the mast, that wire is going to come out. And you don't want it to bust you in the face. All right. We're pretty much at a place where we're going to follow the manual line by line. What they want you to do next is remove the plug from the mag pickup on the control ring of the swash plate. Right there. Done. It says remove the scissor assembly from the connecting parts on the main rotor hub shaft and from the bearing ring of the swash plate. That's this part here. It's your drive link. They call it, what do they call it? Scissor assembly. Cool. Done. Next, remove blanking cap from the mast. You have to remove that. Otherwise, you'll break it when you flip this whole thing over. To disassemble the mast later on okay the next thing they want you to do is to remove the control rods on the front of your mixing lever gear unit but the first thing in that chapter in the maintenance manual tells you to install the fixing clamp or fixation clamp below the sliding sleeve of the swash plate put that white part in there 
then disconnect the control rods. And that's going to drop your swash plate down onto your fixation clamp. So just be careful when you disconnect the fork lever connecting rod. And just set them down like that. Next, remove attachment hardware from between the bearing block and the hinge support of the mixing lever gear unit. That's right here, these two bolts. The manual says, to prevent damage in the area of the main rotor shaft, attach a suitable foam rubber, rubber spacer between the main rotor shaft and the top of the spacer. Get a big piece of foam like this one here and wrap it around and zip tie it onto the mast. In be so, it, so that when you lift this thing out and flip it upside down, the swash plate doesn't just fall. All right, next it says attach control and booster links of the mixing lever gear unit to each other with cable ties. So zip tie the cyclic levers and the fork lever together so they don't flop around because everything's going to be disconnected. Next, fasten swash plate to the connecting forks of the bearing ring to the lower hub shaft of the main rotor support using cable ties. So right here, the green lines, pretend those are zip ties. You're going to zip tie from where the bottom of the PC link attaches to the lower part of the mass flange just so it doesn't spin around or flop around so it keeps everything stable all right we're moving along right remove it says remove the screws and the washers from the flange of the support tube right here and then it says remove velocimeter i call an accel accelerometer mounting bracket and slide support tube into the sliding sleeve of the swash plate since you get everything zip tied together, you can lift up the swash plate a little bit, cinch down the zip ties, and pull out that fixation clamp, that white part. And then you could slide the swash plate support right here. You could lift it up a little bit just to free everything up. But just be careful. Right now it's not an issue, but when you go pull the mast out of here, this lower part underneath the swash plate support you could see it it's i don't know it looks like an eighth of an inch thick but that's the outer race of the mast bearing and sometimes when you're pulling the mast out that will lift out also and there's an o-ring underneath that there's two o-rings one underneath the support and one underneath the outer race if that lifts up at all you probably screwed up the o-ring and you're going to need to replace that o-ring just a heads up before you put that big piece of foam up there Put a couple rags just in, be, um, in between the mast and the top of the swash plate support on the top of the swash plate right here. See where these rags are? Because when everything gets disconnected, it's going to flop around a little bit. But once you have that foam in there, it should be pretty stable. But you do not want that top of that support banging around on that mast. Okay, progress. Next thing we're going to do is remove the, the mast nut. It's inside the bottom of the transmission. So... Ensure that your transmission is drained of oil. Drop that lower plate. Reference the maintenance manual. Now we're going to a different section. Like I said, we got to bounce around a hundred different places. Oh, they want you to they want you to move remove the mass nut and then the main rotor blades. I'd probably remove the blades before I take the mass nut out. Just makes me feel a little bit safer. All right, next section, removal and installation of the main rotor hub shaft nut. This is the nut, it's the same chapter, removal and installation. There's two different types of nuts. This is AMM 6231004-8. There's a whole bunch of different setups here, but the one that we're dealing with is the closed retaining ring, post service bulletin 135 63016, and in this chapter, it is variant 3. Okay, what do they want us to do now? They want us to remove the retaining ring from the nut. How do you do that? Loosen the nuts and release the washers. Do not remove these nuts. The three nuts here, do not remove them. Just loosen them all the way. Next, remove these three screws, they call them, but they're bolts. Then it says you can remove the retaining ring assembly. The retaining ring assembly includes the retaining ring, the bolt locking washer and the rotary ring, the rotor ring for the mass moment indication. Remove the retaining ring assembly and the main rotor hub shaft seal from the main rotor shaft. So you just pop it out of there. But there's a good chance that there's a ton of oil in there. I've heard this from a couple guys. I haven't experienced this, but a ton of oil is in the mast. It's supposed to seal the oil out of the mast, but um, 
Sometimes it doesn't work and it seals oil inside of the mast, so that's no good. And when you pull this down, the cable at the top, you're going to have somebody release it and it's going to fall down and just don't let it smack you in the face. Be careful. This is the new style mast nut and now they want you to loosen all 12 of those bolts. They're called pre-tensioning bolts. And then you could just unspin the mast nut and now the mast nut is out of there. Okay, back to the removal of the mast chapter. Now they tell you to remove the main rotor blades. Uh, hopefully you've already done that before. We're not going to go over that. Now they want you to measure and note dimension X from the lower edge of the main rotor hub shaft to the lower edge of the collector shaft inside the transmission. Right here. So they want you to check this measurement between these two spots and write it down. Because if you go back with the same everything, the same spacer tube and everything, it's supposed to be the same measurement. All right, now we're at a point where we could take the mast out. So they want you to uh, attach. Well, look, you're going to need to put the flower pot back up there and bolt it down, torque it up, because that's where our lifting eye attaches to. And then you're going to hook up the crane. But they talk about something here that I, I haven't done in a very long time. Usually the mast just comes out. But they say uh, extract the main rotor mast with an ejection device. So there's a tool that they want you to use to push the bottom of the mast up. And we used to do that, but I don't remember doing that for a very long time. Because the mast usually just comes right out. I don't know if the old masts were tight or fit. I'm not sure. But if you're going to do that job, this part right here, what do they call that thing? They call this the thrust piece that goes inside the bottom of the mast and it's just held in with an O-ring. So if you use this and you use the hydraulic tool to push it out, this has been known to fall off and go inside of the transmission. So if you end up using this piece and you lift up the mast at the very end, make sure you have it and put it back in your kit. All right, so right now, Put the flower pot back on. Obviously, this isn't the right picture. This is a picture of a flower pot. Because yours wouldn't have blades attached to it, right? And you hook up your lifting eye and you lift it out nice and carefully and make sure that the spacer tube does not fall out. That is a huge, that's a warning in the manual. Don't let the spacer tube fall out. All right, so use a hoist or a crane and lift it out. And then guide it away from the helicopter. Make sure your thrust piece is where it's supposed to be. Set the mass on the ground on something nice and soft and safe. Disconnect your flower pot. And then have a couple guys wearing gloves. Flip this thing upside down so it's setting on the top of the mass flange. And we're almost done, honestly. And like I've said in my other videos, but just to make it perfectly clear, anything that's shiny metal inside the transmission that's normally covered with oil, don't touch it with your bare hands. Always wear gloves, because if you touch it with your bare hands, it's going to rust. So the next time you take it out, it will be all rusted or corroded. There's an O-ring on the bottom of the swashplate support. Make sure that did not fall inside of your transmission. So grab that and make sure you have it, and then trash it. The next thing that most people don't read because they think the job of removing the mast is over, it says manually, manually screw the groove nut, which is this right here, onto the collector shaft on the main transmission until it is in contact with the inner race of the roller bearings of the collector shaft. And the reason Airbus wants you to do that is apparently the inner race of the bearing on the collector shaft right here, I guess, can fall out. I've never seen that happen, and I've seen people do this job without using this tool. But don't be the guy who has to call your boss and say you need a new transmission because this bearing fell out when you were putting the mast in. All right? Just my two cents. All right, so that's it for the removal of the mast or the removal of the main rotor hub shaft, also known as the mast. Now you're good. Now we're going to go on to step two, which is inspecting the spacer tube. That's the next video. All right. All right. There's one other thing that I forgot to talk about, but I made a video previously about retorquing the mast nut. 
or the mass nut retort. And I go into a great detail talking about the different mass nuts and the, the different retaining rings and the seals and the service bolt in and all that stuff. So I didn't go into crazy detail on removing that mass nut this time. But if you want a refresher, go check out that video. Appreciate it. I hope it helps you. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully we'll get some out of this video. On to the next one.